Hello Spare Parts Army, I'm your average infantryman Chris Cappy. So it looks like Washington may have made a terrible mistake when they decided to shut down the F-22 Raptors production line early in 2011. Why is that? The F-22 was the first ever fighter with an emphasis on stealth. So the F-22 has a unique combination of speed, agility, and lethal long-range weaponry. Aviation experts claim it's the best air dominance fighter in the world. The F-22 in air-to-ground configuration can carry two 1,000-pound GBU-32 Joint Direct Attack Munitions, or JDAMs, internally. Its primary role of air-to-air -air configuration is fitted with two infrared heat-seeking AIM-9 air-to-air missiles and six AIM-120 radar-guided air-to-air missiles. It's enough firepower to make a former ground pounder like me blush. The decision to axe the aircraft's production has resulted in the creation of just 187 operational F-22 fighter jets, which is less than half of the 381 the Air Force claimed they needed and far less than the 750 they originally wanted in the 1980s. This choice is now being called short-sighted, as we're starting to see it result in serious force structure problems within the already stretched-thin U.S. Air Force. Here's the problem, the need for stealth fighters to deter both Russia in Europe and China in the Pacific was never accounted for and since the F-22's highly secretive stealth technology was never approved for export, NATO is now severely short-handed. Let's find out why canceling the F-22 might be worse than you think. You know I'm a huge fan of military strategy and tactics, and that's why I recommend Warpath Ace Shooter, because this game allows you to control a whole army. Warpath is a free-to-play, massive multiplayer online role-playing game. They have more than 10 million downloads and over 350,000 reviews, which is proof of how much fun people are having with this game. You can use more than 150 real-world tanks, fighter jets, and infantry weapons. Deploy your equipment in massive, heroic battles, and come out on top as number one against hundreds of real-life players. My favorite in-game tank is the customized M4 Sherman tank. I love how this game allows me to take part in famous battles using my own unique strategies and tactics based on the battlefield situation. They just released a live action film, Warpath Showdown 2 Centenary, that shows the brotherhood you can achieve by working together and creating strong bonds with real people. Fight side by side with each other and develop strong alliances to dominate the battlefield. Plus, whether you're a newbie or a grizzled veteran, you can join with your friends to compete in Warpath tournaments for the chance to win up to $15,000. Real War makes real brothers. Click the link in the description, download Warpath, taste real war, real brotherhood. Starting on December 1st, 2022, the U.S. Air Force began withdrawing 95 of their F-15s to retire from Okinawa, Japan, because they were nearing 40 years old. But they didn't have enough F-22 Raptors available to fully replace them, so they'll have to be rotated through, which is an expensive strategy that might only work for the next half year, which would cause a gap in air power in the South China Sea. Kadena Air Base is strategically important because it's just 400 miles off the coast of China. F-22s would now need to be pulled off their current mission in Europe where they're currently deterring Russia. In 2011, it was Defense Secretary Robert Gates who made the infamous call to cancel the F-22 early because according to his own memoir, the F-22 was useless in Afghanistan and Iraq counterinsurgencies, was a Cold War relic, and the Chinese stealth fighter jets wouldn't be ready until well after 2020, so nothing would be lost by ending the F-22s. Gates said, quote, we have to fight the wars we're already in today and the scenarios we're most likely to face in the years ahead. But according to a Mitchell Aerospace Power report, the current Air Force simply cannot generate enough sorties to support joint operations in a fight with China. Whoa, wait a second. Did that F-22 just flash us? Just yesterday on December 29th, the Air Force released footage of the Chinese J-11 fighter jet that made an unsafe intercept flying within 20 feet of an American RC-135 surveillance plane over international airspace in South China. To see. The Air Force needs more fighter escorts to prevent this kind of behavior. The jet is very specifically designed for the kind of dogfights that would give air superiority in the South China Sea, and unlike how most aircraft have the role of bombing the heck out of the ground, the F-22 is designed for specifically destroying other fighter jets. How does it do this? The F-22 uses an advanced APG-77 radar, giving it the ability to see the enemy first without being seen. The APG-77 is produced by Northrop Grumman, and it's an extremely sensitive radar that picks up targets that are just 11 square feet in size at ranges of over 400 kilometers with the newest V1 variant. To get an idea of just how powerful the F-22 is, 
It has 35,000 pounds of thrust in each engine, giving it more power than any other fighter jet. It has an operational range of 1,850 miles with its two external wing fuel tanks installed. The F-22 can travel at over Mach 2 and has a max flight ceiling of 50,000 feet. In addition to its bomb payload, the F-22 has an M61A2 20mm Gatling gun with 480 rounds of munitions. The F-22 has four underwing hardpoints that can carry 5,000 pounds of bombs if necessary. All that air power makes me want to say hua. Wait, does the Air Force say hua? So why can't we just restart the old production line at Lockheed Martin and Boeing? It turns out that's easier said than done. And in 2016, Congress asked senior level members of Air Force to look into doing exactly that, to see if it would be possible to restart the production line for the F-22. But aviation experts have pointed out that the production facilities and supply chain for the F-22 was already eaten up and used by the new F-35 fighter jet. The problem appears to be it might just be easier at this point and cheaper to develop an entirely new and better fighter aircraft than to re-kickstart the F-22. The Air Force sent a classified estimate that it would cost around $50 billion to procure 194 additional F-22s, an estimated cost of $206 million per aircraft. The F-22 had a somewhat troubled production history already. It was delayed by 52 months or just over four years. The program started in the early 1980s to replace the F-15. At this point, the Air Force was looking to acquire 750 of them, but we'll see that that number gets whittled down over the years. It would take another 10 years until 1990 for their first prototype test flight and another 10 years after that to go into production. Lockheed Martin manufactures the airframe, weapon systems, and final assembly, while Boeing is responsible for the wings, aft fuselage, avionics, and training systems. What made the F-22 Raptor unique is that it would take advantage of new technologies and fighter designs that were coming on the horizons like composite materials, lightweight alloys, more powerful propulsion systems like the twin P&W F-119 turbofans, and the introduction of new stealth technology. 1.7 million lines of code were written to fuse the multiple different radar and weapons tracking sensors to be integrated all together. According to Sandbox.us, the 700,000 total pounds of combined thrust have specifically designed nozzles which allow the aircraft to pull off its incredible air acrobatics. All of its weapon systems are carried in the so-called clean configuration, which means all of the armaments are internally stored inside bomb bay doors which is important for its stealth characteristics, as anti-air systems would likely only detect it once it opens those bomb bay doors to release payload. Well, according to the South China Morning Post, a Chinese military expert said, quote, a ground-to-air hypersonic missile could catch up with and destroy an F-22 Raptor in seconds if it fired a missile or dropped a bomb from short range. While he meant that as a boast, it sounds like China's experts are admitting that they would need to be close range with likely a special kind of missile and that the F-22 would have to drop its ordnance first in order to even be detected and then destroyed. In hindsight, we know that the fifth generation stealth F-22 has been essential in the war in Syria and they're necessary to counter China's first stealth squadron that went operational in 2017. The F-22 can super cruise, meaning that it can fly at supersonic speeds of Mach 1.8 without using afterburners, which are are notorious for using 400% more fuel. But with the end of the Cold War and the Soviet Union falling apart in 1991, this reduced the Department of Defense's urgent need for a new fighter jet. To be fair, the Pentagon had to make some tough choices at this point. To keep the F-22, they would have reportedly either needed to reduce military pay and benefits, or possibly skimp on new anti-missile systems like the Patriot. Tough choices had to be made with the information that they had available at the time. Listen, I get it, if I was asked back in 2011 if I would want to invest more money into counterinsurgency vehicles or more into air-to-air -air fighter jets, I would have made the wrong call too. But that's why I'm not the Secretary of Defense. Not everyone had it wrong though. Air Force Secretary Mike Wynn was fired because he wouldn't stop pushing for the need for the 318 F-22 fighter jets. Every Air Force combat command chief since then has warned that the current F-22 force is too small to meet the demands placed on it. This is because the F-15, which has suffered mid-air breakups due to years of grounding, will now need to be stretched into service life and stay far beyond its expiration date to supplement the reduced small F-22 force. Aviation expert Tyler Rajaway from Warzone.com has stated that another reason the F-22 was canceled is possibly due to the fact that it was seen as an unnecessary competition to the F-35 program, even though the F-35 was never originally designed for dogfighting like the F-22 was. 
Since 2010, there have been reports of operational problems with the November 2010 fatal crash with the F-22 in Alaska, and they've recorded about 25 physiological incidents with F-22 pilots reporting hypoxia-like symptoms. These issues with the gear have since been fixed though. The Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies argues funding appears to be at the heart of all of these issues. The Air Force's budget has been less than the Navy and Army for the past 30 years in a row. To put that into context, the Army has received 1.3 trillion more in funding than the Air Force between 2002 and 2021. They claim that without the correct mix of modern air power and funding, the US national security's core strategies will not work. They go on to say that the latest proposed American defense budget will shed about 1,000 more aircraft than it plans to buy over the next five years. The end result is an even smaller, older, and less ready Air Force potentially. So what I interpret all of this to mean is that the US has a stance of deterrence against China right now, and it turns out air power is going to be one of the deciding factors. It was likely for this reason that in 2014, DARPA initiated a study to field a replacement for the F-22 Raptor, currently called the Next Generation Air Dominance Program. The research and development of the F-22 will likely be used in this new next generation fighter. So while the F-22 might be retired without being ever used in an air-to-air -air extensive combat scenario, it has already played an important role in air superiority and deterring war. If you like this video and you want to see more aircraft rundowns, consider hitting the like and subscribe button to let me know, and follow me on Instagram at CappyArmy.